on the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello everyone, I'm News Channel 5's political analyst Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. The Tennessee House of Representatives has a new leader. He is the Speaker of the House, Cameron Sexton from Crossville. Mr. Speaker, welcome to Inside Politics. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, you were elected by your colleagues just a few weeks ago. Your selection came after months of scandal and controversy, even a vote of no confidence and resignation by your predecessor, Glenn Cassida. Since you took over, what have you been doing to sort of restore faith and confidence both inside and outside the General Assembly? Yeah, I get that question a lot. That's usually the first one. And, and a couple of things that we try to do is, one is we're trying to bring back fairness where everybody's treated fair. People will have their voice. We want to make sure that every single member, they represent 65,000 people. They are they're here and to have their voice so we need to make sure to have their voice and also to cut down on the divisiveness as well. You said you wanted to go about the state and listen to what people have to say so what have you heard from Tennesseans so far and how is that input guiding what you're planning to do? Yeah so we've been in East, Middle and West Tennessee so far we still have some more areas that we're gonna travel through throughout this state and you know there's commonality amongst all of them and then there's depending on where you are there's little um, special issues that pop up now and then so it's been a, a good a good experience. What are you hearing from your members from both sides of the aisle. I mean, a lot of them felt kind of put out by the fact that there was a list of bills circulated by your predecessor they wanted killed. They're concerned about eavesdropping and spying on lawmakers. What are you doing to rebuild trust among your fellow colleagues? Yeah, I mean, one of the first things I said, I think if you go back and look at the speech when I was running for speaker, is we're not going to have anybody killing any bills. That's up to the chairman and the committee to do that job. You have to have the faith and trust in your chairman and your committee to do it, and that's what we're doing. We're putting them in spots to where they can be empowered. You know, the other the other aspects of it is there's been employees who have left and other things, so we're in the process of, of making those moves as well as going back and looking to make changes to the policy and procedures and the processes. On a bipartisan basis you have mentioned the idea of lawmakers of both parties coming together to do some public service projects together. What have you got in mind? Well so I've, I've reached out to a couple of reps um, in the Shelby County area and they're looking at um, some things that we may do. I don't want to just be ceremonial. I told them we want to do something to do with labor whether it's painting, picking up, doing whatever, building um, and we're going to try to do that across the state as we can. Reaction from lawmakers as been good they're ready to go out and start doing something? I think they are. It, it allows us to have a different dialogue than talking about policy in Nashville. We can actually talk about things of their lives and get to know each other better. Do you see that happening before session begins in January? Is that something more say for the spring when the weather gets a little nicer you're going to go out and clean up lots? Right. We're hoping actually to do something before before we go back in session. Uh, speaker Cassidy is still a lawmaker representing uh, Williamson County. Now previous speakers have stayed in the legislature after mm -hmm. stepping down but usually it's because their party lost control of the house. That's not the circumstances here. Has any way of this, is this transition been okay? Has he been cooperative with you? Everything going okay and well? Yeah, everything's going fine. I mean, I haven't had many conversations uh, with Representative Cassida at this point. And, you know, he, he is on some committees that we appointed him to because he's still a representative. And it's his, um, between him and his district, if he wants to stay or not. So you haven't felt awkward about it? No, no. Um, it's you, politics. You've been in the General Assembly for about a decade. Uh, you observe the role of the Speaker, but have you been even surprised with how much the Speaker does? I mean, it's, it's more than just appointing committees or running the meetings. I mean, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to it. You have to have a very good staff as well to help you manage and handle everything that's coming in, whether it's board and appointments schedule. and a busy schedule and traveling. And um, But th there's a lot to go into it, more than you, you um, are accustomed to. The nice thing is we have a four-month period between now and session where we can kind of get our feet up. When you came to the General Assembly, did you ever see the day that you would be the Speaker of the House? Was that one of the goals you had when you came in to represent the Crossroads? I, I wouldn't area? say it was one of the goals. I think everybody who comes into the House um, or who wants to run for further office at some point thinks about an opportunity. But it's all about opportunity, about timing, whether or not you are able to achieve that or not. It's a different Speaking story. Speaking of running for a future office, I read a profile in which one of your supporters down in your district said he hopes your next step will be running for <laughs> governor. Is, <laughs> well, that, is that on your agenda? It's all about timing and opportunity. Governor Lee's doing a great job and I look forward to working with him over the next eight years which I think he'll be governor for. You have a strong political pedigree in Tennessee politics. You are related to the families of both former Senator Howard Baker and Knoxville Congressman John Duncan. Um, you also work for former Congressman Van Hillary and you're close to the current Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally. Uh, what role do all these people play? Have they been mentors for you? Well, how important have they been in your life? They've been mentors. I've known Randy the longest since I was in high school and he's known me the longest. So that's a special relationship that we have that we hope to continue on as we're Speaker and Lieutenant Governor. But all the other ones have been mentors um, for me as I, and I've learned a lot from all of them. How has that relationship with Speaker McNally changed? Because 
the Senate's the Senate and the House is the House, and there's some things you can help you with, and there's some things that you don't talk about. Well, I mean, if, if you have a strong relationship with one another and an understanding of one another, whether you agree or disagree um, on an issue, you can still work together. And I've worked with him a lot over the years as a representative in areas to, to help change policy on what he was wanting to do and what we were trying to do, and we, we were able to bridge that through good communication. Governor Lee is still more or less in his first year on the job. You're about to start your first year as Speaker. How has your relationship changed? How well did you know Governor Lee or work with Governor Lee before you became Speaker? Well, I knew him a little bit. You know, I was the caucus chairman, so my role was a little different this last year with him, but he has a good staff around him, and he's a very good person with a great heart, and we're looking forward to working with him and building relationships. Are you still going to have those weekly leadership meetings that usually held out at, at, at the residence so every week just so nobody is surprised by anything going on up on the hill or in the administration? Well, that, that, the governor calls those meetings, so if the governor's wanting to continue, which I think he wants to continue the, the legislative breakfasts, and so we'll we'll do that. And any time that he wants to have a, a conversation or meet, I'm willing to meet and have the conversation. Now, the signature achievement of Governor Lee, his first term, was the approval of a pilot program in Nashville and Memphis to award education savings accounts, some people call them vouchers, to allow students in failed public schools to go to private schools. Uh, you voted against that bill. Why? I did. Well, I was just philosophically against um, the voucher ESA plans and, you know, there's, I just had different varying opinions about it and I come from a strong background of public education with my grandparents and my parents both being educators. Uh, the laws passed um, envisioned it beginning in Memphis and Nashville in two years. The governor has talked quite a bit about wanting to start it a year early. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned about that? And is there anything the legislature can do to make sure it takes two years instead of one year to get started? Well, we, we've expressed our feelings to the to the governor and he understands that. And, and the, the law was passed and the governor has the ability based on how the law was written to do what he thinks and he's moving through with the rulemaking process. And my understanding is there's others who are looking to file some lawsuits. And this week the state education board was looking at the rules and they're gonna meet again in November. So we'll just kind of have to see how everything falls out. There are already lawmakers, a lot of them Democrats seeking to repeal the voucher program as the Speaker of the House, you can either help that a lot or hinder that a lot. Where are you going to be? Are you going to stand in the way or encourage efforts to try to take another look well, at Well, I mean, that gets you into that kill bill list again, right? And so if, if you have, if you put people on your education committee and have the right chairman in the place, they will do the job to make sure what needs to pass passes or, or amend whatever it needs to be. Members can file any, uh, up to 15 bills. And so if a member wants to file a bill and put it for before committee, then that's what they can do. The new Tennessee Speaker of the House, Cameron and Sexton from Crossville is our guest on Inside Politics. Back to continue our conversation with the speaker on the other side of this break. Stay with us. This weather update is sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee.